No promises, but uh, I'll try. Radio Free Innsmouth, episode 286. Doing another episode about demos, since people seem to like the last one. Dank demos, part duh. Triple D. This is Donner's Drive-Ins and... This week we got three Slavonic bands. Although to be fair, with one of them, uh, I actually didn't know they were Slavic until fairly recently. So the first demo we're talking about is Cryptic Tales' is Valley of the Dolls demo from 1994, which I heard once a long time ago and loved it, and then had a really hard time finding it again for years and years, because I thought it was Dutch. I mean, can you blame me? It's weird, atmospheric, avant-garde doom death. That's got Holland written all over it, but no, it's a Polish band. Good of Kurva? Kurva! Wish I had known that at the time, because I swear to God, at least once a year for the past friggin' seven or eight years, I would type different combinations of the words doom metal and death metal into the advanced search on metal archives under the Netherlands, trying to friggin' find it, getting steadily more and more frustrated. I mean, do you have any idea how many doom death bands there are from the Netherlands? 105! There's 105 of them. And I would go through and listen to each and every one whose name I didn't recognize, and it was never the band I was looking for. Impressive! Me. Ah! And I eventually gave up on it as a lost cause until earlier this year, someone, you know who you are, posted a recording of that demo, I recognized the album cover, turns out the band was Polish the entire time and I'm an idiot. Ah! Anyways, thanks for posting that, you're a peach. But for real, these guys do not sound like a Polish band, I swear they sound Dutch. Which is weird, I mean, there is something of an odd crossover between Polish death metal and Dutch death metal. Namely talking about Sinister from last week, you might remember I was a big fan of the parts on their third album where they went like... Like, there's roots for an entirely new style of death metal within that sound. And unfortunately, I don't know how many bands picked up what Sinister were putting down there. That said, over in Poland, one band that did follow up on that style roughly a year later was the highly underrated band Damnation with their album Rebel Souls that had plenty of riffs sounded like... Which would seem to be a direct follow-up to the atmospheric sections that Sinister had been utilizing. Can't prove that, just thought it was interesting. Cryptic Tales sounds nothing like that. Indeed, they don't really sound like anyone else. Which is why their demo stuck out so much to me back in the day. I mean, you got standard sounding death metal riffs like this one. Good, fast, brutal death metal. But then a lot of those riffs end up transitioning in some really weird shit like this bit right here where it almost takes on a stoner rock cast. So then you're thinking, okay, maybe these guys were more of a death and roll band like Disgracer and Tombs, but then they start hitting you with some really weird atmospheric shit and it becomes clear how unique this band is. Sort of a calmer, more meditative approach to death metal. Actually, that's a big part of why I thought they were Dutch because they reminded me quite a bit of Perpetual Demise, at least until they brought out the album's signature element. That being the very noticeable presence of flute as a main instrument for the band. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get it. It's like death metal, but with a flute. Brett Stevens. I said, lady, I have autism, leave me alone. Used to use that as a standard mockery of what he called circus metal back in the day. But occasionally that flute can end up working out pretty well. One good example would be the Russian band Temnozor. The other one would be this band right here. So in addition to flute, also bring in other elements from kind of a 70s prog rock background, like that really heavy cow bell and the excellent rolling percussion. But what makes the flute work is how they use it essentially as another lead guitar layer, specifically one that you can vary the texture on quite a bit more than you could with, you know, a standard lead guitar instrumental. So here we go, weirdly calm, very groove-oriented, proggy doom death with long songs and a wacky flute. It's not quite melodic death metal, but it is a lot more consonant than you would expect death metal to normally be. I'd say it's influenced by a lot of the same bands that influenced early melodic death metal. A whole lot of Paradise Lost going on in particular. The keyboard usage is stellar as well. A lot of these tones almost give me kind of a Burzum vibe, which I would say is a good thing since this band is clearly pushing for a very meditative sort of atmosphere. Wacky outer space shit. Anyways, here's another really good example of them utilizing the flute for its different textural variances it's capable of. Like right here, they can come in really harsh 
and then back off to more of a beautiful sort of lyrical tone for contrast and kind of thread it around what the lead guitars are doing before they bring back in those very cosmic sounding keyboards. You know, it's not really a typical sort of death metal atmosphere, but it is a very ear-catching one. would highly recommend this EP, especially a big fan of the big tom rolls the drummer is doing. A much younger Jub might have called them jazzy. An older Jub has actually attempted to get into jazz before. Realized, uh, one, jazzy death metal, not really that jazzy. Two, jazz kind of blows. Even most of the jazz fusion stuff. I'm a fool to do your dirty work. Go, yeah. I don't want to do your dirty work no more. But what doesn't blow is that Cryptic Tales demo. Highly recommended. More music that doesn't blow. The second demo we're gonna cover today. Amorbital's Crystal Rhapsody from Slovakia. Now there definitely is a Polish death metal sound and there definitely is a Dutch doom death sound. And I personally think Cryptic Tales sounds more like a Dutch death doom band than a Polish death metal band. Amorbital, however, definitely sound like a Slovakian death metal kind of thing. And if you know anything about Slovakian death metal, that means they're gonna sound pretty weird. Two biggest Slovakian death metal bands I can think of off the top of my head. You got Apple. Plexi, whose sole album that I've heard from them is strange as shit, weird blend of really dark death metal with some odd proggy stuff that almost kind of approaches melodic death metal. And then you got Depressy. who very much come from the early septic flesh school of death metal, in that there's almost just as much black metal as there is death metal, and there's a whole lot of weird clean guitar and symphonic shit, odd atmospheric stuff, and Orbital mirrors elements of both of those bands, but have their own unique and even stranger take on how to play some weird progressive Slovakian style death metal. The title track of the demo, Crystal Rhapsody, is all instrumental, but it sounds a whole lot like 13 Frightened Souls era deceased to the point where I keep expecting King Fally to come in with a yeah like he usually does. But like I said, it's an instrumental, so that's not gonna happen. Instead, we get a whole lot of very epic heavy metal sounding riffs worked into more of a death metal song structure. Somewhat like the chasm in that respect, too. Has a real heavy epic feeling to it. With some very majestic sounding riffs, somewhat redolent of the heavier aspects of US power metal. They also utilize a whole lot of keyboards, which is where the uh, depressive comparison kind of comes in. But that's just the instrumental title track. When the vocals start showing up, that's when things get a little bit more bonkers. Because the death metal aspect of this release is death metal, death metal. It's not doom death, it's not melodic death metal, it's straight up death metal, albeit kind of screwed around with, particularly with the implementation of sonic layering. And lots of weird clean guitar transitions that still manage to preserve the very morbid feeling of the music despite their lack of distortion. The same can be said for their integration of keyboards into the music, which is, again, suitably morbid, giving off sort of a dark, mystical feeling. And the songwriting's pretty clever. I like how they've been working in more and more elements of that clean guitar line from earlier in the song, kind of weaving it in and out of these thick walls of distortion and brutal vocals. Speaking of those vocals, I'm kind of enjoying this weird schizophrenic back and forth the vocalist is having with himself. He's arguing with whatever demonic voices are running through his head, building up through a major cathartic release that will come via this album's usage of lead guitar parts, which are a bit more structured than is typical for death metal, but again, they're still suitably morbid and strange sounding. Hey, I think I see some change on the floor. Change! change. Alright, maybe it's not that kind of breakdown, but it's still pretty darn heavy. And it's cool hearing them work in all those odd avant-garde death metal elements into it. I mean, you see that demo cover, Blue and Purple Fantasy Castle, you're thinking, it's probably gonna be some kind of melodic death metal thing, but Amorbital or Amorbital or however you say it, they keep things pretty darn heavy. I mean, they do have some melodic elements. Like right here, yeah, that's a pretty melodic death metal kind of riff with that lead guitar and the almost kind of man of war ish backing rhythm heavy metal riff going on underneath it. But they can just as easily jump from that into something a whole lot heavier, often approaching the more brutal end of death thrash, such as this bit right here, which honestly sounds Floridian as fuck. Total malevolent creation sort of riff right here. And I really like the vocals over it, including that weird filter he's using. But even then, they gotta take that sort of thing and turn it inside out and all strange. 
by changing up the groove to more of a stop start one like something you might hear on a gutted album and then adding that extra layer of lead guitar and using it as a linking riff into some more heroic sort of mellow dance stuff like this riff right here sounds like something you might hear on a fucking Argus Line album I know how much you guys love that band so you should be into this too this demo even came out the same year as Arsenal of Glory and now for something completely different another big change up featuring some rather prominent melodic bass guitar fills as we head back into more standard brutal death metal kind of shit that's the sort of wacky blend of styles you can expect from and Morbidal. Would highly recommend this demo, which is why I've been talking about it. All right, third demo. Guess what? This one's not death metal. Oh no, I didn't mislead you. Remember the first part of the series was called Dank Death Metal Demos Triple D. This one did not have the word death metal in it. It was called Dank Demos Part Duh because I still wanted it to be Triple D so I could utilize the This is Donner's Drive-Ins and bit that I'm so entertained by possibly because I'm retarded. <laughs> No, this is a black metal band from Croatia. If you're one of those people that has a hard time telling the difference between death metal and black metal, I just made your life easier because all that stuff we just listened to, that was death metal. Now we're going to be listening to black metal. Then this band, Castrum, as mentioned earlier from Croatia, they might initially turn some listeners off because the vocals have a little bit of a... Incredible, smooth muscle control. Danny Filth type thing going on. But you shouldn't let that discourage you from listening to this band because the music underneath is unquestionably some real nasty black metal. This is underscored by the production, which is way more thick than what you might expect for the black metal genre. I mean, listen to that thick steaming load of black metal goodness. Come on. You know that's some good shit. In fact, I don't even mind the Danny Filth vocals. I might not be a Cradle of Filth fan, but, you know, Danny Filth himself seemed like a decent enough guy. Had a lot of good advice for our favorite gothic bad boy. Brush your teeth, and also to bathe this year. At least once this year, possibly. Also, it's got a lot of spooky bell noises and cool gothic elements. Like these spoken word parts right here. Very vampiric. And the riffs are catchy and memorable. And they have a peculiar melodic character to them that we will get to in a bit. Just note that for now, there is something special about these melodies that's worth going into. But yeah, I checked this out because it had a cool logo on it and had a spooky foresty, icy black metal scene. Looked like something that I would like, and guess what I do? Most of the songs are around the eight minute mark, and they definitely take their time building themselves up, letting all those black metal melodies unfold, spurred along by the much louder than normal bass guitar. But what really sticks out to me is their utilization of what I like to call the black metal bass drop where all the music goes away at once and then comes back in on an ultra-heavy mid-paced sort of black metal riff with an emphasis on a very bassy tone to it. This is actually a pretty standard counterpoint riff to the one that began the song, but you might not have noticed it because of how much heavier it is in this context. Speaking of context, there's an interesting geographical thing going on with this band, being that they're from Croatia. See, those melodies I was talking about earlier, they're not just standard sort of like Nordic or Slavic style black metal melodies. They're played in that standard black metal style, but the melodies themselves have just as much in common with a lot of Mediterranean black metal like Rod and Christ of Verathon. And I think this has to do specifically specifically with this band being from Croatia. You see, way back in the day, there was this group of people running around going all <laughs> on everybody. You might have heard of them. They were called the Romans. The Romans? Where were they now? You're looking at them, asshole. Anyways, they were over in this part of the world they called Illyria, the southern part of which was called Dalmatia, and a lot of modern day Croatia is located there. In fact, even after that whole Roman thing kind of came and went, Italy and Croatia have been slightly tied throughout history. There's a lot of Italians that live in Croatia, there's a lot of Croatians living in Italy, and out of pretty much all the Balkans, unless you count Greece, Croatia is probably the most culturally Mediterranean one. I mean, they're even still Catholic. And I'm thinking part of the reason that there's so much Mediterranean black metal influence within Castrum's otherwise very traditional Slavic black metal stuff might have something to do with that. I don't know. I mean, listen to how heavy that bass guitar is. That's definitely more Mediterranean, almost Necromantia-ish. And part of what makes this band so interesting is how these Mediterranean black metal elements manage to coexist with the Nordic ones, like this droning bar chord riff. They also bring in a whole lot of keyboards and more folky elements. 
which could be attributed to their Slavic heritage. I mean, a lot of this sounds quite a bit like early Nocturnal Mortem. And like Nocturnal Mortem, they're big on very long songs with a whole lot of sections and different sorts of compositional dynamics, a lot of light and shade, different moods. You got this almost dungeon synthy piano part followed up by this ultra heavy, ultra dark melodic black metal riff some real nasty vocals over it. Seemingly disparate elements can coexist within the same song. And a lot of this has to do with their flair for changing moods via tempo shifts. For instance, this iteration of that melody pretty much goes into black and doom metal territory, complete with some very heavy snare hits. But then you take that exact same melody and play it over a more burzum style drum beat, it completely changes the emotional tone, at least for me. I don't know, it's an interesting little thing they do to help these songs really make the most of their incredibly long running times. Here's another black metal bass drop section, but instead of going into like a really heavy riff, they kind of drift over into more of that dungeon synth kind of territory again. Complete with stock rain sound effects. That for me, they don't sound too cheesy, they fit the mood. Helps that the melodies themselves are so well constructed. And that rainy atmosphere will actually be very important to the progression of the song, which shifts back into black metal mode. With a very Wagnerian thundercrack followed up by some nice bass accent notes into the shrieky vocals. If you're more a black metal kind of guy, would highly recommend Castrum's Nocturnal Eden Behind Serpent Eyes. And if you're more into death metal, definitely check out Am Orbital's Crystal Rhapsody and Cryptic Tales' Valley of the Dolls. Optimally, I don't know, you should listen to all of them because they're all fucking good. Hopefully this episode was pretty fucking good. But even if you hated it, uh, thanks for watching or listening or whatever you did, and I'll see you next time. The Gilda Millers uses only the finest grains. True Roman bread for true Roman. Another.